find my fucking shoe. Where are my shoes? Hey, y'all see my shoes? If you forget everything else, but not this, you have nothing to worry about. It's one thing. Keep walking, motherfucker. Keep walking. There's one thing you must never forget. Never forget. Never, 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 never forget this one thing. If you remember everything else. If you forget this one thing. If you remember everything else. And you forget this one thing. You will you will have done nothing in your life. Nothing. Nothing. This is the one thing! The one thing you must never forget! Give me some fucking noodles! One dollar! Demon! One dollar! She's a goddamn, she's a goddamn demon! You no pay no noodle! No noodle for you, no pay! Thank you very much. Huh? Hey, what's the thing? The thing? Thing. How should I know? Find out for yourself. You find out for yourself. No one is gonna tell you. You have to figure it out for yourself. You have to figure it out. If you forget everything else, there's one thing you have nothing to worry about. One thing. Welcome to Babylon Undead, an exploration of cinema outside the mainstream, the hard to find, the unloved, the reckless and the daring. Films that blow your fragile little minds. Films that don't give a fuck what you think. In 2014, a black and white Farsi language film hit the Sundance Film Festival and heralded an exciting new voice. This wasn't your usual mumbly, introspective Persian cinema. This was fresh, exciting, brutal, a noir vampire western that inspired many in the mainstream media to call out his young director as the next Tarantino. Although, to be fair, this turned out to be more attributed to Eddie Moretti of Vice Media, the backer of The Girl Walks Home and of tonight's film, The Bad Batch. Somewhere in the future, America has become puritanical, oppressive. Toe the line and obey and you'll be fine. If you're a misfit, then forget it, you're screwed. Nonconformity and aberrant behavior are rewarded with a tattoo and expulsion to the desert wasteland, fenced off and abandoned by polite society. Suki Waterhouse plays social misfit Arlene, a young woman literally branded undesirable and dumped into this open air prison to fend for herself. She's barely arrived when she is captured by cannibal bodybuilders living in the hollowed out carcasses of fallen aircraft. And what she has to endure literally costs her an arm and a leg, pun intended. But she finds a way to overcome her jailers and escape, finding refuge in a small town called Comfort. All of this happens within the first half an hour, told with barely any dialogue. This is a punk rock spaghetti western in the searing desert heat. There are a cavalcade of great performances here. English-born Suki Waterhouse playing white trash like she was born into it. A pale rider in hot pants. Keanu Reeves playing creepy Svengali. An actor developing a knack of capturing the darker side of life and of sleaze. We also have the wonderful Giovanni Ribisi playing crazy, replete with Ribisi-esque tics. And let's not forget Jason Mamar as the menacing Miami man, a cannibal with a heart. What's not to love? And then there's the music. And as hard as it is for me to say, these are words I thought I would never utter. But one of the standout needle drops is Asa Bass's song, All That She Wants, which is only topped by Di Anfert's Fish Paste, used as an introduction to the cannibal colony.
Uh. This one's dedicated to all the haters out there. Jealous of us because we're better than you. You're Landy Fisser, bring the spouse. Throughout this movie, the choice of needle drops and music is inspired to the point of making a crate digger wet themselves. Anna Lily Amirpour has been making films since she was 12. She is a product of an English birth, Iranian parentage and a Florida upbringing. This director is rapidly shaping up to be this generation's Jodorowsky and this film like El Topo and Holy Mountain is a sprawling trip. Despite the relatively low budget of just six million dollars, somehow this film only made a paltry $180,000 or so the internet would have me believe. Financially this film was a failure. But then so was the Shawshank Redemption. So was the thing. So was Brazil, Buckaroo Banzai, the list goes on. And it was only released in 2017, so it's early days for this film. Without the full disclosure of video and streaming revenues available at the moment, we can't truly know what the whole story of this film is, and only time will tell. But I am staking a post in the ground now and raising the flag. This is my pick of Future Cult. Play your part, buy a copy or stream, links below. Nevertheless, all of that money is up on the screen, and it's all the better for it. It is a gorgeous film, bright, colourful, playful, horrific, terrifying. Each shot cut together marvellously, so beautifully that special mention must be made to the cinematographer and editor Lyle Vincent and Alex O'Flynn. Well done, well done indeed. And it sounds wonderful, and at the risk of repeating myself, the music is fantastic. It's probably obvious in retrospect that Bad Batch was going to be a slow burn. It was probably never going to find its uh, feet in theatres without the backing of a major distributor like a Blumhouse or an A24. And upon research, the distribution rights seemed to be a tangled mess, which is an affliction that afflicted and buried dread in so many films before. Hopefully this doesn't affect Amir Poor's future releases. I don't think it will. This, this is a film that should be seen on the big screen. It screams for a pop-up cinema event at Burning Man or on a beach, or as a double bill with Repo Man. There's the thing. We will see more of Anna Linnea Mirpur, do not despair. In fact, this show intends to talk about another one of her films. More on that later. What we have here is a director a great director, and she will continue to make great movies. But obviously, from her limited filmography, this is not going to be easy. Amirpour is not choosing an easy path. Her films are challenging. These are not films about women on a comedy hen night or talking about their favorite books while sipping oversized glasses of red wine. These are violent, troubled stories that stick a middle finger up to your expectation, and she does it with a giant grin on her face. So beg, borrow, or steal a projector, drag your big screen TV outside to your garden or to a beach, fire up the barbecue and grab some legs and throw them on, because this is pure cinema. This is a fantastic ride. And one more thing. There is a cameo in here that some of you will know and some of you won't. Please, if you know, do not spoil it for others. Let them discover who this is. Let them feel the joy as you did when you discovered it too. Thank you very much. I really hope you enjoy this movie as much as I did watching it. And I will see you next time on Babylon Undead. Sit back, relax, get your beer. Enjoy tonight's presentation. Anna Lily Amir Pause The Bad Batch.
I'm sorry. Uh-huh. 